Welcome back everyone. So now we have a cubic PZ curve, but it's not enough to build the full path. To form a path, we need to stick a bunch of cubic curves back to back. So let's start the integration. We go and delete the curves object, create an empty game object, and name it path. Create a new script. And name it path. Add the path script as a component to the path object. Open the path script. This script will be similar to the curve script, but we will have a list of vector tree instead of an array. Because we are using a list, it will make it easier for us to add and remove segments from the path. We should use the namespace system.collection.generic. Great, now go and create an editor script. We name it path editor. The first setup of path editor class is similar to what we did with curve editor in the previous video. I will speed up the video until I finish this first integration. The create position handle method will be similar to what we did with the curve. The only difference is that we are iterating over a list instead of an array. We set this list to private. Because the list is private, we will set accessors for the points. Don't forget to convert the points from local space to world space.
draw the path. We will draw a cubic BZ curve for every four points in the list. Every two curves will share a middle point. We use a for loop to go over the control points of the pad. We will increase i by 3 and not 4 because the starting point of the new curve is the last point of the previous one. We get the points defining the cubic busy curve. To draw the curve, we can use our custom busy curve method, like we did in the previous video. But this time, I choose to use a built-in method in the handles class. It takes the four points defining the curve. P0 is the start position. P3 is the end position. P1 is the start tangent and P2 is the end tangent. We set the color to black. And the texture to null. We set the width to 4. Great, now we have a curve. Let's add more points to the list to see if our code is working. We will use the reset method to reset the path to its initial form. First, we clear the list. Then we start adding the points to the list. But first, we should set the number of points we want the path to start with. We add the points. To test, we will set the init point count to 7. This means that the path will be formed by two cubic PZ curves. We go and reset the path from the inspector. Great, as you can see, the path is working as expected. We go and set the init point count back to 4. Next, we will add the option to add more curves to the path from the inspector. To create our custom inspector for the component's path, we will override the oninspector GUI method. We get the path. We create a new button. Using the button method from the GUI layout class, we set the text in the button to add segment. This method will return true if the button is clicked. 
If true, we will add a segment to the path. We will create a new method add segment in the path class. The starting point of this segment is the last point in the list. We set an offset. We start adding the new points to the list. We use the starting point position as a reference. And use the offset so our points don't overlap with each other. Every new segment will add three new points. We go and click the Add Segments button. The problem here. I should hover the mouse over the scene in order to trigger the update. Let's fix that. We will force the editor to update the scene every time we click the button Add Segments using the SetDirty method from the Editor Utility class. We reset the path. Now, if we click the button, the scene immediately updates. But still, we need to record our change. It is similar to what we did with the control point position change. But still, Unity doesn't recognize the change. Even after we recorded it, let's fix that. Because the list is private, we should explicitly tell Unity to serialize it. We will use the serialized field attribute. If you are not familiar with serialization, I will put a link in the description of the video. Great, now Unity give us the option to undo the change. Let's add another button to remove a segment. We will only remove a segment if the path has more than one segment. We create the Remove Segment button. We record the object. Set the object as dirty. We remove the segment from the path using a new method. We will call it remove segment. We remove the last three points from the list. We 
we get how many points are in the list. We start removing the last three points. Awesome, now we can add and remove segments and build our path. This will be the end of this video. In the next video, we will work on making the path look better, so we can easily work with it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.